Welcome back to Champion News Talk Radio, and we are brought to you by championnews.net. We are your choice for the conservative voice. This is Carol Parisi, our founder, Jack Roser, and myself are talking with Bruno Barron. And Bruno, solutions, solutions. I, I decided, I, and I'm not announcing I'm running for school board because I am not. What can I do as a mom, as a school board member? Okay, well, first of all, what, there are certain things that school board members can and can't do. They do have a modicum of control, but it's very, very hard to exercise it based on the way the system is set up. So uh, if you are on a school board, you are one of seven votes on the budget. So if you ended up with four reformers controlling a school board, for example, you can drive a much harder bargain. There's some really great people here in Illinois. We, uh, we call them the, uh, they, they call themselves the independent school board members of Illinois. They're not really an organization or anything. It's just a bunch of fiscal conservatives who keep on saying, wait a minute, why are we wasting money on this? Why are we spending money on that? It's a, it's a hard road to hoe when you're one out of six or two out of five. But there's more property tax payers than there are union yeah, well, here's the biggest. If, if you want to improve school boards, and obviously getting more people to run uh, is part of it, but one of the fastest, best ways you can do uh, things you can do to improve school boards is to move school board elections from April to November of every uh, even year. So they're 11 percent. Because you basically on school board elections, you have five to 12 percent of the voters showing up. And those are the five to 12 percent who are friends of the teacher union bosses, friends of the teachers, friends and, and the school. Uh, you, listen, listen to the stuff that you're asking me and just notice how organized the soccer moms are to do the bidding of the school boards, or, I mean, of, of the unions and the school boards and, and the, the existing school board members. So the, the hardest part about, and, and this is not to say people shouldn't do it, they should. The hardest part about running for school board is to get four good reformers on it. And once you have four good reformers on it, then you can start demanding more uh, control over the administrator's contracts. You can start demanding more control over the pension payments, more control over the teacher's salaries, and you can start fighting those battles. If you're one out of, and, and that's not to say that if you're only one reformer on the board, you have no power, you can start exposing the things exposing. that the school board is doing. Right. And, and I, I kid you not, I have said this when I had my own radio show, I've said this when I've had my blog, and I'll say it now, every single school district in Illinois, some are worse than others, but the fact of the matter is every school district in Illinois is a mini Enron. They are designed <laughs> to launder money. They launder money to the bond dealers with bond deals. Uh, premium bonds should be illegal, but districts all across Illinois have used them um, to, to scam more money into the district and make property taxpayers 10, 20, 30 years out uh, uh, bankrupt. Um, they've done this across the board. So there's so many reasons to be on the school board. But what, the, what I keep on telling people, the most important thing, get on the school board, learn what's going on, take that knowledge, and start moving up the food chain and challenging the state rep in your district 90% uh, of which are rubber stamps for the Association of School Boards, the Association of School Superintendents, and the teachers' unions. You know, you were talking I'll, about I'll, superintendents. I'm going to add just a couple of things. One of them is, uh, frequently you'll find if you get three people on the board, you will, we'll, on important stuff, from the other side, you'll get somebody to come over right. and pass it. So you get four. However, uh, i got a different view on what can be done. And uh, nothing is going to move in the state of Illinois until you take the hide off of the stinking IEA education union. They are a subdivision of the NEA, which Forbes called long ago in 1993. I can show you an article where it headlined with uh, the, uh, the National Education Association. No, it's a National Extortion Association. He was onto it, and I distributed a thousand copies of his article way back in 1993. Mm -hmm. Now, you aren't going to do a damn thing to change anything in the state of Illinois till you take the hide off of the stinking IEA because they take $132 million a year to, uh, out of uh, the dues of the teachers. The teachers are getting tapped out. Their salaries are going into to, uh, producing uh, the, the scam on the politics of the whole state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the Beck decision says that 80% of that money that the IEA is taking from the teachers, 80% is nothing but for politics. But they don't That's $100 million a year 
There are two years between elections. That's $200 million. Every election cycle goes largely through the direction of Madigan. I'm not accusing him of a felony. It's just that it's more like a war that's happened to our state with those guys in charge. It's so nothing is going to proceed anywhere until you get rid of of the reputation, and everybody recognizes that the IEA is running a, the schools in the state and almost everything else, and until you take down that rotten organization, and I'm not accusing them of a felony either, but it's like a flood or a tsunami, what they've done to our state, nothing's gonna happen until you realize that the union has power, powered the money and the people behind the stinking mess that has turned Illinois into what it is. I'm old. I remember when Illinois was a lead, leading state, but Cook County was a leading county in the whole country, and it's been torn down largely by these rascals that are running the Education Association. Well, so next election, realize it. The, look, so, those SOBs, are, they are the ones that are bringing uh, the rotten candidates in to run the state. Well, look what's going on in uh, just recently here in Michigan. Mm -hmm. The unions are not happy about that right to work. And we're going to be going to break. But the thing is, Jack, I was going to ask you, you're talking about superintendents. What's the highest superintendent's salary? Ooh, I don't know exactly, but I'd say a little over 300000 A little a over 300000 $300,000 a year on taxpayer dollars, and that's just one. And that's for a figurehead. Yeah. Not educating your child. We'll come back after the break.